For the Lord your God is God of gods, Lord of lords, a mighty, great, and terrible God. Now, as we study the Holy Word from the beginning to the end, we continue the book of Deuteronomy. And in this lesson, we will see how the Lord continues to reiterate laws and order to the new generation of the children of Israel as they draw nigh to the promised land. In Deuteronomy 16, verse 1, the Bible states, Observe the month of Abib, and keep the Passover unto the Lord. For in the month of Abib, the Lord thy God brought thee out of Egypt. Come with us as we go through chapters 15 and 16. I'll see you there. Chains on my hand, chains on my feet. 
to study the Bible from the beginning to the end. The Bible says, let us be wise in understanding the will of God. And it's the Bible that is a clear a pathway. It's a light unto our lives um, so that we're able to understand the will of God clear. If you want to follow us, we are on YouTube. We have a platform, please subscribe. We're on Facebook, like and share. We're on Ruku. We have a Ruku channel, United States Church, and it's the one that's developed by United States Church, and it has all the content. We also have Vimeo. Hey, I got a little friend that's going to help me. How are you? Okay, you can tell him about, uh, I told him already about Facebook and um, YouTube, so you can finish the other two platforms that we have. 
We have Vimeo, Facebook, and YouTube, and Roku. Roku channel. Yes, if you have um, Roku, you can actually download and um, and download Vimeo there, and it's a very clear picture. And we also have some other platforms that we are working on to uh, put some of our content there. So please join us. Let's listen to the preacher. And is there anything else you want to say? Stay tuned until the end for God. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Good job. Giving thanks unto the Lord, the great I am, the portion of Jacob, the mediator for mankind. We want to thank you again for coming in this endeavor as we are studying God's holy Bible from the beginning to the end. As you know, last week we talked about the time when the Lord was foreseeing the times when the Israelites would go into the nations that he was giving them. And God was giving them a law to abide by because the former generation had passed away and God was taking the youth, the young, the generation of Joshua into the new land. The Lord had entrusted the first generation to come out of the land of bondage and to go into the land of grace, but they needed to learn to be obedient. They did not learn this. Instead, they went after idols. They went chiding against Moses. They uh, came against the Lord. They were stiff-necked. That's when the first time that the Lord said unto them, you are a stiff-necked people. And also Moses, being led of God, even he himself was caught in the midst of the people and that the people got him to act out of character and that the Lord wanted his name to be hollowed and he did not hollow his name. So then the Lord made a judgment against Moses. So now the Lord is dealing with the generation of Joshua and he's telling the people, he's giving him a new law, the, a, a formal law that he had before, but there is a, a bit of some amendments that the Lord has made with his laws because the Lord has watched the Israelis now for about 40 years. So he's seen their ways. So you're going to look at some laws right now that he's giving them, but he's reiterating the laws, but now he's adding onto the laws and is probably based on the natures of the people and that he had been watching them for 40 years. So let's pick up in the book of Deuteronomy and we're going to go to chapter 15. Now, remember the Lord had already given them a law and he had now given the command unto Moses to tell Joshua exactly how to be as he was going into the nation. So we're going to pick up in chapter 15. The Bible says, At the end of every seven years, thou shalt make a release. Verse 2, This is the matter of the release. Every creditor that lendeth aught unto his neighbor shall re release it. He shall not exact it of his neighbor or his brother because it is called the Lord's release. What did the Lord mean by this? You are not going to, if someone took a borrow from you and you put a credit upon it and that they had to redeem the money by paying a little interest. The Bible is telling you that in seven years, you're gonna let it go. Let's look at verse three. Of a foreigner, thou mayest exact it again, meaning you can keep a foreigner paying but that which is thine with thy brother, thy hand shall release. So the Lord allowed them to loan money. And if you were a, a foreigner in the land, the Lord allowed you to sustain. Now, these were of the Old Testament or the First Testament, as we call it. These were Israelis versus uh, uh, the Gentile. And at that time, the Gentile had not fully come into the way of the Lord. But God allowed them by the law to continue to allow ought unto the people that were a foreigner. But if you are Israeli or Hebrew, the Lord told you after seven years, you're going to release it. Now, I know some will say, well, you know, some that came into the American society were not exactly of our kind. So this is why we exact uh, uh, payments on them. Well, no. The Bible was saying based on the covenant, the covenant was under the, the Hebrew people. So it was acquired to the Hebrews. Now we are under a new covenant. Now, even in your day, uh, if you have credit, most of us in the nations, unless you're under the radar, you have credit. And after seven years, if you notice things should come off of your credit. Uh, if, if you have not paid that debt, 
Uh, and, and this is basically a law of the Lord. The Lord, basically, he changed things after seven. He didn't want you in bondage. And as you, as we continue on, you're going to see the mind of the Lord. So verse four, save when there is no poor among you, meaning you cannot do this as long as you have the poor among you. And here's what God says, for the Lord shall greatly bless thee and the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance to possess it. Five. Only if thou carefully hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all the commandments, which I command thee this day. So again, let's go back to verse one. At the end of every seven years, thou shalt make a release. That is, you, you're going to expunge their debt. You're going to clear it up and you're going to release them so that they are not in bondage. And if you go at verse four, he tells you why save when there is no poor among you. Meaning if you get to the point, Israel, that there is no poor among you. Now, some will be poor in, uh, let's say the Benjamites, some will be poor in Levi. Some, well, Levi was an inheritance of the house of God. So not Levi, but let's say Naphtali. Uh, let's say that Naphtali's group was doing very well. Their family was doing very well. Uh, then you did not have to exact. But if you had the poor among you, he says, save the poor. If you have the poor, then you have to release. You cannot keep them in bondage to a debt. The Lord did not like that. And in this nation, you're going to find in America, because of all the things that has hit the land, it will be uh, behoove you to release some of the poor from the debt. And we know how that you take aught of the poor and you charge them high interest rate. Well, there's a law for that. The Bible tells you not to do it. He tells you not to take usury for your brother. Now, if you're an American and you're this in this land and we're sh sh sharing this property and this land together, then you are under the, the law of Christ. So we are all brethren. Now, I know a lot of you say that the law is of null in effect. You're incorrect. This, this is a law. And the American society and many other nations around the world are still obliging this law that after seven years, some of you, you know, things drop off of your credit. Even when people put things on your credit and shouldn't be there, you know, there's a law and you can advise the, 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 the law givers of something that's happening to you that is illegal and it should come off. Why? Because of this law. Let's look at verse seven. If there be among you a poor man of one of thy brethren within any of thy gates, in thy land, remember what I was telling you, if he was of Naphtali or if he was of a Benjamite, he says, if any be among you in your gates, meaning this is a part of your family. These are a part of your people. So when the people of Israel came out of the land of bondage, when God begins to disperse them, he had them in their families according to their names. Okay. If you remember when the Lord was giving them their pedigrees. Uh, you know, when they were going out to war, where, where they were assigning into war to, to ascribe to their commanding officer for battle. The Bible talked about certain pedigrees. Okay. It was a part of that family. So every family has a pedigree. Every family has a type of skill, something that you do. It could be, uh, you could be builders. Uh, you could be musicians, uh, like the Levitical office. You could be a Levite. Um, any other name, some careers or, or, or skills that people have people, you could be an artifact carpenter, Christ like my lady electrician. <laughs> Sweetheart, there were no electricians then <laughs> we're talking about, <laughs> well, Engineer. There were engineers because they were making certain things. I don't mean to laugh. I'm sorry. Okay, so if he if he was an electrician, maybe he was working with fire. Okay, so elect well, electricity is kind of on a fire. So the candle workers is that what it was? Electricity. No, I'm in the law, sweetheart. I says names of profession of what they were doing. She said electrician. <laughs> well, I mean. It could, they could have had it. They just didn't have the knowledge yet. I'm sorry, baby. I didn't mean to laugh in front of the world about that. Okay, so um, verse 8, thou shalt open thy hand wide unto him. 
Let's go back. Verse seven. If there be among you a poor man of one of thy brethren within any of thy gates, meaning whichever tribe you are in thy land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not harden thine heart, nor shut thine hand from thy poor brother. Okay? If there be any poor. Now look at what the Lord says. Verse 8. But thou shalt open thine hand wide unto him, and shalt surely lend to him. Didn't say give to him. It said lend him sufficient for his need in that which he wanteth. Now, listen, the Lord didn't want you poor, but if he's poor, more than likely he can't find work or he did not uh, move forward in his profession. But if you are able to lend, you are also probably one that can give him work. Now you will find in the book of Proverbs that the Bible says that if a man doesn't work, he doesn't eat. See, in this day and age, we just feed everybody. You get up, you do nothing. You don't work, you don't labor. That's, it is a universal law. The Bible says that Adam, from the sweat of your brow, you shall eat all the days of your life. Now the Lord did amend what he did to the earth. He says, I will no longer curse the earth for man's sake. But the Bible says clearly, if you do not work, you do not eat. But now you're going to see as he goes on, he's going to talk about the Levites. Many of you look at Levites as being non-adding uh, to the community or to society. But this is, uh, this is incorrect. This is his provision. This is his provision. This is his career. This is what he does. A, a Levite has to know the word of the Lord. He has to know, when I say word of the Lord, I'm not just talking prophecy. I'm talking word of the Lord as it's written. So that is his profession. So if a Levite is working in the house of God, he is to have meat. You're going to see that. The Lord is going to tell you in the law. So again, God is reiterating his law. He's showing you that he has a law and it is to make sure that there are no needy in the land. So look, we're going to look at verse eight again. But thou shalt open thy hand wide unto him and shalt surely lend unto him. So if he needed bread, okay? In those days, people paid their uh, landlords or people were, where they were staying. They had to do the same thing you're doing these days. Uh, just it was done on the shekel. And the rating of work was based on uh, what was done in the land as far as interest rate and how high it was. What was the value? Um, so barley and the wheat, that was still a weight based on how good the agriculture was in those days. How good trade was going. So uh, inflation or when your rates would go up for a specific thing was still going on in, in the biblical days. And again, you're still in biblical days. You're just in the final biblical days because in the book of revelation, you have not fulfilled these, these books. So people say in the biblical days, well, you still are in the biblical days. There's it's not done. The new Jerusalem hasn't come down. And we understand that a lot do not believe we understand that. But again, in your scientific review, of life, you only see 10%. For those who think I'm making a sign, I'll do both eyes. You only see 10% in your eyes. That's it. Again, I say this all the time. The gamma rays, the, the, the radio waves, you can't see them. You cannot see the variations of light, which makes the color, the vibrations, which makes color. Purple, red, violet, blue, indigo, yellow, you can't see those vibrations. Your eyes cannot see it. So again, in the biblical days, as was old, moving forward to now, you're in the biblical days now. And there is a new Jerusalem which shall come, which will be in the heart of Salem, Jerusalem, Israel. So look at the scriptures. Verse 9, the Lord knows how people can be. So he says, beware that there be not a thought in thy wicked heart. Now look at what he says, your wicked heart. Because if you look to devise, if you look to deceive, if you look to take advantage of, the Bible says, take heed before you go into your wicked heart, meaning you're getting ready to slight your brother. So I'm going to let you know, I already know how you think. I know how some of you can be. I've watched you for 40 years now, and I've seen how you've been with each brethren in the wilderness or your sisters. So look at verse nine again. Beware that there be not a thought in thy wicked heart saying the seventh year 
the year of release is at hand. And thy eye be evil against thy brother, and thou giveth him not. Meaning, you're not going to give him a loan. You're not going to help him out. And you have the ability to do it. Let's say it's in the fifth year. And you realize, hmm, if I give him this loan, or if I help him out, the, the year of release is in two years. So I'm not going to do it. Well, the Bible called that wicked. See, it's wicked if you have been blessed and there's brethren among you and you do not help him or her and your hand is able, the Bible calls it wicked. If you devise in a way that says, I'm going to not lend him this money because I know in two more years is going to be the year of release and I'm not going to lose my money for him or her. The Bible calls it wicked. You know, and it's really interesting. You know, if you have a savings and you're saving and you're doing well, you, some of us, you, you, you may get blessed above your friends. You may do well, you know, and it, it's, 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 it's really sad in our generation that when you start to climb in a certain status, you forget the people who are with you when you were friends. You know, I'm not talking about people who they come in and out of your life. I'm talking about people who are there in your life and they stay there. They love you. They want to be around you. They're there when your children are born. They're at your weddings. They're at when people decease. They, they, they are there in your life. They're there for your graduations. They're there for your children. They're there for you. If you're with an individual like that, and let's say that you begin to excel in life. The Bible says that if you have the ability to give your friend or your companion something and you do not, or you are able to do it, but you say, I'm not going to do it because I'm not going to get it back. The Bible called that a wicked heart. You're going to go further and you're going to see how the Lord did not want anybody in the land of Israel that was without. And that's because he blessed everybody. So he says, beware that you don't have a wicked heart and you try something and look at verse 10. Thou shalt surely give him and thine heart shall not be grieved. Meaning you're not going to give it grudgingly. You're not going to get it uh, uh, to him with this uh, dis dis disgruntled character. You're going to care. Verse 11. For the poor shall not cease out of the land. So you could have a family that is actually doing well. And you could have another family where there's someone poor. But look at what the Lord says. You're going to lend him the money. He didn't say give. He said, Lynn, now you still can give. The Lord is not going to be uh, 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 hold it against you for giving, but lending means everybody's doing something. You're working. You, you're going to work that money off. And, you know, the Bible's basically saying in the seven years, you're going to release them from it. Okay. Therefore, I command you still at verse 11 saying, thou shalt open thine hand wide unto thy brother, to thy poor and to the needy in the land. So the, there's a difference between the poor and the needy. See, a poor can be one who they, you know, might hit it, hit it hard in a little bit of the year. They could lose a job, you know, specifically. Look at, look at the day you live in. So many variables of laws that go on. So many things that happen with these, uh, uh, these new uh, plagues that hit the land. And so many regulations by powers and legislative states that you put hardships on people. And people feeling that their uh, rights are being infringed upon, they may take a stand and they may lose their ability to take care of their families. Well, if you know of one like that and you leave them out there, the Bible says you have a wicked heart. You are to help them. So again, he says, I don't want there to be any poor among you because it's going to happen, but I don't want it is what he's saying. Now, the needy, you know, that can fall on those who are generally fatherless. It can fall on a single mother or a widow woman. Now, again, some of you young ladies, if you go out and you open your legs and give your matrix for free to an individual and you require nothing of this man and he just has you and then you bear his child, okay? And then he did not, was not a dutable man. He did not prove himself to be a worker and but you lay with him for pleasure and you have child now, then this is on your own hand. Now, that doesn't mean you be left out. 
But if you are a single woman now without children, be wise. You do not want to bring to yourself a responsibility. And men, biblically, you are not to lay with a woman without making a covenant to secure the internality of that child. You are internal beings. You are uh, uh, eternal beings. So when you come together, you procreate and you bring forth life. So the covenant must equal the, the power of that seed. And what is the power of that seed? It's eternal. That's why a covenant has to be eternal. This is the enigma of the circle, the sphere. It's round. It never ends. This is what it means. It's a covenant for everlasting. So young ladies, if you do not want to be in a situation where you become needy, you become poor, do not open your matrix. And men, if you don't want to be poor, don't go into the matrix making children without a means to provide for them. Okay, verse 12. And if thy brother, an Hebrew man or a Hebrew woman, be sold unto thee, and serve these six years. Then in the seventh year, thou shalt let him go free. Now, remember, we read this in the book of Exodus. We talked about the law that they could serve for six years. After the six year, they were able to go free. But in that time, the Bible didn't tell you what he's getting ready to tell you now. I believe the Lord amended this law because he probably looked upon the children of Israel for 40 years and probably saw some things that he didn't like. So look at what happens. He told them, if, if they work for you for six years, it says, verse 12, then in the seventh year, thou shalt let him go free. It's the law. As soon as the seventh year get there, he is free. Now look at what he says. Verse 13, and when thou sendeth him out free from thee, thou shalt not let him go away empty. Now, the Bible is using the prefix of he. But he is referring to a Hebrew woman and a Hebrew man. Okay? Woman is still a man. She's just woe man. Get over here, girl. So anyhow, in the scriptures, God, <laughs> my son's looking at me like, Dad, are you serious? So she's still a, a man, but she's a woman. She comes from man. And look at what he says. If you have a Hebrew woman or a Hebrew man, when he goes out free, meaning they both, you will not leave them empty. I'm going to read it again. Verse 13. And when thou sendest him out free from thee, thou shalt not let him go away empty. Look at this. Verse 14. Thou shalt furnish him liberally out of thy stock and out of thy floor, and out of thy vineyard, winepress, and of thy wherewith the Lord thy God hath blessed thee, thou shalt give unto him. What is the Lord saying? He worked for you, she worked for you for six years. You're not going to let people go out in their seventh year without you liberally giving unto them. This is the law. Now again, remember the law prior. Now let's go to the American society. You say, oh, we didn't do that. Our, our generation before us did it. Well, the Bible says you can't muzzle oxes and not feed them. It's a law. You cannot have anybody work for you without paying them. It's the law. So you went into the law of Moses and you thought that the brown people from the land of Ham, you thought they were cursed. But they weren't. The Bible says cursed be Canaan. Most all the Canaanites that were in the world were removed from the earth. The land of Canaan still remains as its title based on the geography of what you've documented and your, uh, uh, your papers and your histories. But the people of Canaan were destroyed. So the Bible says, cursed be Canaan. Canaan. But God warred with Canaan. Who did he use? He used the children of Abraham. Who are they? He used Ishmael. He used the Edomites. He used Ammonites. He used uh, Midianites. And he used Israel and Moabites, right? They all fought 
the giants. They remove the Canaanites. So again, God is establishing a law that you're not going to have any among you poor. You're not going to take usury of anybody. And when they leave you after they've done six years with you, see, you got to think of what God is looking at. He knows that you having people work for you, they're bringing into you value. They're bringing into you profit. Okay. Look, we all know how business works. We know how capitalism works. Actually, Bible is capitalism. Capitalism. Any, anything outside of that, you don't get freebies. You don't just get to show up and get anything free. Now, you could look at it as socialists if you're thinking you're given something. But the Bible says you will lend to him if he's poor. It didn't say give. Now, uh, not to discredit if your government has given unto you because of the times that has happened. Uh, some things and that where we live, we are taxed in everything. Now, if you look at the book of the Genesis, Joshua, I'm sorry, Joseph, he charged the people to pay one fifth to the king. So that was 20%. Now, priest Melchizedek, who was already in Salem, which was in the land of Canaan, was taking from Abraham one tenth. Now, I don't think that was just the battle of the Sodom and Gomorrah in which he defeated the five kings. It was a regularity in that Abram brought a tenth unto Melchizedek. And priest Melchizedek was already in the land. So let us move forward. Verse 16. And it shall be, if he say unto you, I will not go away from thee, but he loveth thee and thine house, because he is well with thee. Verse 17, thou shalt take an all. Remember, we talked about that. And you shall put it in his ear and he'll become yours for the rest of his life. Now look at verse 19. All the firstling males that come of thy herd and of thy flock, thou shalt sanctify unto the Lord thy God. Thou shalt do no work within the firstling of thy bullock, nor shear the firstling of thy flock or thy sheep. That means the firstborn belongs to the Lord. They're mine. They belong to me. Verse 22, thou shalt eat it within the gates. He's basically talking about if you offer anything unto the Lord, you're going to eat it within thy gates and the unclean and the clean person shall eat it uh, alike and the roebuck as, as, as to the heart. Now he was talking about, do not bring anything to me that has a blemish. You will not bring me an offering that has a blemish. Why is this? Because in a blemish of an animal, if there is something unclean in that animal and you offer it up, it's unclean. So it can't really make an atonement for you. So the Bible says you can eat it. It can go into your digestive and you'll be fine when you put it in the fire. But you cannot offer that up to me as an unclean thing to cleanse you of your iniquity. So that was the law. And that was because, people, we were under a different covenant. You were under the covenant of the natural man. Babe, do you have the... Um, inside of the tabernacle, God required them to bring the blood of an animal. Now it was done on the outside, but now when you went into the holies of holies, you had to touch that mercy seat with some blood. There had to be, something had to be sacrificed in your stead because you were unclean. You committed iniquity. See, God judges iniquity. It has to be judged. So many times in the sacrifices, the Lord was requiring this so that you also would understand the cruelty of death. Many animals died in the stead of men based on man's sin. But the Lord wanted you to understand the severity of it. And the scapegoat, what they would do is lay their hand on that thing. And then he would escape into the wilderness, but they'd catch him. And, 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 and many of them, they would bring unto the priest and they would watch them take the life of this animal. And it was a, it was a, an atonement for your life. So now the Lord is saying, don't offer anything unto me that has a blemish. You will offer only that which is pure. Chapter 16, observe the month of Habib. Habib was the first month when they came out. Listen to what he says. And keep the Passover unto the Lord thy God. For in the month of Habib, the Lord thy God brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Two. Thou shalt therefore sacrifice the Passover unto the Lord thy God of thy flock and of the herd in the place which the Lord shall choose in his place where his name is. Meaning, the people are moving about in Israel. The Lord has now broken the tabernacle down 
And he's saying, you're going to make an offering where my name is, where we put this tabernacle up, where the Levite is. You're not just going to be doing these offerings anywhere you want. Okay. And this even goes on the line of, uh, let's show, show our modern church. A lot of times there is an established teacher and he's the leader of the house. And what people will do is they will set up where they have their own type of sacrifices or prayer meetings unto the Lord outside of the church. Now, the Bible actually encourages you to break bread amongst the people. But the Bible also showed that there were elders and there were uh, Levitical offices. Uh, now they are, uh, what do you call that? Uh, deacons. So in the modern uh, church, they were called deacons, but that was like the Levitical office. So the Bible is showing in that time, the deacons were chosen to keep tables. What were these tables? These tables were the breaking of bread in the community in the people's midst. And this is what they did. They broke bread all the time. This is what they did. Now, you have to understand the heart of God and the mind of God to know what was the will. The will was for you to break bread with your brother. Many of us, we go to Bible study. You go to your Sunday morning and then you do your Bible study. Very rarely do you go out and you have time where you're with the people who are in your church. Now, there are some great churches out there who actually has bonding time where, what do they call them, babe? Do they, they call them cell groups? And what else do they call them? You don't remember? I, I think it was just cell groups. This is what, cellula? Yeah, so I don't know if I said that correct. I was told to say that. So I don't know what I said. <laughs> Anyhow, in these groups, what they would do, it's really biblical. They would break bread. Now, they still had people from the house of God who was uh, uh, submitted unto that temple of that house, specifically of Timothy, uh, Priscilla and Aquila. Uh, they, they went out and did the things of the Lord. This is what the people did. They broke bread together. They ate together. So when the Lord is telling you, do not go out and sacrifice on your own. That is the Old Testament. Okay, that's the first testament. He's basically saying, you're not going to go do an offering without a Levite because you're not anointed. You are not called to do a, a, a sacrifice or an atonement for people. So the Lord is saying, you're going to go where my name is. You're going to go where I am. And many pastors, they have this problem where there are people in the midst who they want to assert themselves and they start meeting with the people of the church and they start doing their own cell groups or their own Bible studies. And, you know, babies get born out of these things. There's issues happen. Sometimes churches are born out of this where there is a minister of the house and you are a Levite ascribed to a Levitical priest. But what you do is because you have charisma, you go out and you begin to make a name for yourself. And then you start to have Bible studies with people who were already in a house or who had already uh, uh, been discipled by their shepherd or shepherdess. Shepherdess is like a woman pastor uh, where she shepherds as well, you know, and, you know, I don't understand why the body of Christ, many of the uh, young ladies, why, why, why do we astray from the words that describe what you are? You're a shepherdess. Uh, you, you could be a judge. Uh, Deborah was a judge, but she was a shepherdess. Uh, so uh, being over the lives of many, many of these establishments, it is they're over the lives of young ladies where the young ladies uh, don't really have a place to go. Uh, pastoral ships are really struggling in America. And a lot of the uh, pastors have really just left the fold altogether and, and considerably understandable uh, because of the plague. But people need to be shepherded. So if you have a woman shepherdess, she's biblical. Now, when the Bible says be silent in the church, this is still going based on what I'm saying. I'm still in the context because the Bible is actually talking about do not do offerings that are outside of wherever my name is. So the Bible's saying that keep 
let's let's move forward. The Bible was showing in, uh, that women were to keep silent in church, and it's such a conspiracy and and con, and and, and uh, what do you call it? Uh, controversy on this issue. The Bible did not want a woman prophesying over the head of men and not being covered by her husband. That's what that's what he wanted. He wanted order. He did not want the women dominating the men. Okay, but. Young men, you got to understand, there is a lot of single women in our society based on the choices that we have made as a nation. Many other marriages are falling apart and many of these young ladies want to bond. They need, they need family and family or anybody who comes in your midst and break bread. That's what a family is. Anybody who's willing to sit down at your table and break bread with you and the Bible says, let them speak. Let them speak according to, now it has to be in order, let them speak according to whatever the Holy Ghost gives them. So you're telling me that God can't have order? God can't, and what I mean by order, I'm not saying, you know, do as I say. I'm saying order and that it's done in an organization. You understand? Where we understand this individual is speaking right now. The Lord is leading them. Something is heavy on their heart. But there has to be someone who's a lead. So, what do you say for the young ladies who are more bold in the nations where they're not allowed to preach the gospel? And if like that of Deborah, in that Deborah had the faith and her husband did not, now she is not to assert authority and dishonor above him, but God did appoint her. So, but the, it should be done in decency and in order and that the husband must be in agreement. So, but if she's a single woman, Explain to me, the women that are in the Middle Eastern nations, where there is a danger for them to follow the Lord. And let's say one has the heart of Deborah, and she's a shepherdess, and she's willing to look over the lives of these young uh, damsels who, who are without covering. The Lord will give her grace. So before we judge, men, that you want so much order, men, Again, God has order in accordance to his name. He says, wherever my name is, that's where you will do your sacrifice. So again, let's look at chapter 16 again. Verse two, thou shalt therefore sacrifice the Passover unto the Lord thy God of the flock and of the herd in the place which the Lord shall choose to place his name there. Three, thou shalt eat no unleavened bread. Again, you know how the Passover works. They ate no unleavened bread for days. Okay. So again, he was saying, you're going to do this Passover. This is a way of the Lord. This is a celebration before the Lord, but you're going to do it where I tell you to do it. So individuals out there who want to be Levitical. Okay. Um, young ladies who feel that God is calling you. You are a shepherdess. Many of you, you take on the titles that were given to men. But the Bible showed clearly if you were doing a job that was similar to a man, you were called a shepherdess. Christ is called the good shepherd. So, you know, many, many of you, young ladies, you're offended because you're, you're taking a title. So even now you're trying to, you're no longer women. I mean, what are you then? I mean... I just, I, th this day we live in, you know, you, you could easily, everyone, anyone can get in trouble because you call something based on nature, scientific, right? You call something based on the definition of the title of what it is, but now you're making laws that you can't call something as what it is scientifically based on DNA. Everyone knows that a woman, uh, her, 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 her hips expand. Not like a man. Why? Because she's preparing herself for childbearing days. There are other things that happens within her body that, 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 that makes up the, the woman so that she can give nutrients, nutrients, nu nutrients to the children. The definition of that has been a woman for 6,000 years. Now, if you want to change the word to something else, by all means. But we must call you as what you are defined. 
we must call you as what you are defined. When you get into the place where you want to change the definition of something, then show us in science. If science can bend according to what you choose and you are able to alter the 4 billion women in the earth and you can alter it, then let, let's, let's move on toward that. Okay, but you cannot change the definition of what a creation is. You will never be able to do it. So we must just, the Bible says in that day, you will call things that are straight, crooked. And things that are crooked, you're going to call it straight. You're going to call day, night, and you're going to call night, day. You're going to call that which is evil, good and that which is good you're going to call it evil so this is just the day you live in the bible told you that you would actually be like this so we're, we're not really astounded that you're doing this it's just slightly astounding that it's this measure it's this measure of confusion so anyhow we were talking about the shepherdess we were talking about sacrificing in the place of the Lord. And we know that in our nation, there is a divide down the center of man and woman. There's a divide. There's multiple tumults over here and there's multiple tumults over here. See, what needs to happen is you need to get into the land of Shiloh, where Shiloh is, and this is what's gonna happen. You're gonna get so divided where you got your tumult over here, woman. You got your tumult over here, men. And both of you are just... Nah, 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 nah. Nah, 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 nah. And you got a line right here. And what's going to happen is there's going to be a scuffle. There's going to be a wolves and pestilence. And things going to come on that side. There's going to be wolves and pestilence. It's going to come on that side. So, young ladies, you don't want to cross the threshing floor. Men. You don't want to cross the threshing floor. So you're both over here on your own threshing floor. And you got wolves. You got beasts. You got pestilence on this side. And you got the same over here. What's going to happen as these pestilence get over here? Now, now, now. I did not say the soldiers yet. I just said wolves, pestilence, and beasts. What are you going to do when you got that divided line? And there's enemies that come on either of your sides. What are you going to do, young ladies? When the enemy comes on your side and you are all by yourself, you all got your own torment. We don't need a man. And you men are saying, we don't need them. Well, okay, man, you can handle your battle, right? Man to man. Oh, I can handle my enemy. Okay, go out and fight for three days. Okay, fight your enemy and defeat him, then what you're going to do when you get hungry? What are you going to do when you get wounds, when you get a cut? Do you think your friend is going to sit there, put water on you, and nourish your bandages? You think you're going to be able to do that with your comrade? No, that's something that she will do. But no, you're separated. This is a nothing that I'm talking about. I don't know how we got here, but we're here. So you got the ladies over here, right? Now you got enemies coming. You got soldiers coming in and they've got weapons. What are you going to do on your side? You got a threshing floor here and you don't want to cross over. What are you going to do? You're going to call over and you're going to tell them, come over and help you. And young man over here, you're going to call over and you're going to tell her to help you. So you know what you do? You know what's going to get rid of that threshing floor? Is your day of judgment. When you get it in your mind that when God establishes something in the earth, you are to follow it. Right now, you have your way of doing things. So continue on. Right now, there is a threshing floor between you. And it's getting wider and wider. And that gulf is getting deep and deep. Like the rich man to Lazarus. You better figure it out. Because when your enemy comes upon you, men, you're going to need your wives. And wives, 
you're going to need your husbands. So you can keep playing the game you want to play. You can keep going outside of God's word. But time will show you that God's word never fails. Verse 5. Thou mayest not sacrifice that Passover within any of thy gates. Again, the Lord is saying, you're not going to be doing it in your gate, which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Verse 6. But at a place which the Lord thy God shall choose to place his name in. There thou shalt sacrifice the Passover at even. So he's talking about the Passover, but he's saying we already learned about the Passover. He's saying, you're not going to be just doing the Passover. You're not going to be doing a celebration anywhere you choose. You're going to put the name of the Lord there. Young ladies, you're going to pray. Moving fast forward, you should look in the book of the prophets. He says, put on sackcloth and ashes and pray before the Lord. He says, pray and cry before the Lord in sackcloth and ashes. Now, when you do something like that, you didn't invoke his name. So he's there now. So there should rise one that is a shepherdess. There should rise one who is leading the flock. And I don't think there's anything wrong. And the Bible doesn't say there's anything wrong. The Bible never said that a woman could not be a shepherd. The Bible told you keep them silent in the church. In the church. Do not speak over a man is what he was saying. Do not dominate a man. If you are a woman in a church, make sure you have a covering. If you are going to speak in the church where you are leading people, you needed to have a covering according to the scriptures. If you were leading men. Now, if there are multiple young ladies in a church, men, what, what do you have? Show me a scripture that says a shepherdess cannot lead. Show me. Email me. We'll get to it. This is the final days. God's word must be spoken. And he says, wherever my name is, there I am. And if you make a place and you call upon the name of the Lord, the Bible says where two or three males are gathered together, I'm in the midst. Where two or three men are gathered together, I am there in the midst. Is that what the Bible told you? The Bible says where two or three are gathered. He didn't say a man or a woman. So if there are three women in the midst and they're praying in the Holy Ghost, men, it was Agnes who changed China. It was Agnes that got the Holy Ghost. It was Agnes who the Lord, uh, it was a young lady whom the Lord hit her with the Holy Ghost and it shook America. This is how you got Azusa Street. They went from Kansas down to Texas, Oklahoma, Texas, and then they went over to California. They were just moving because they were getting moved out and you were still dealing with issues. Skin tones, you were dealing with that. But it was in the 1900s, the Lord hit this country with the Pentecost. And he brought it through that young lady. Why? She believed. When Jesus was risen from the dead, who believed? That young lady. She believed and says, he has risen. Why the men doubted. So, you are to come together. We understand there is a threshing floor. And there is a separation. But men, pray for our sisters. Pray for them. Protect them. Do not come against them. God is going to get rid of all your traditions. All your hard ways. First of all, it was never the will of God for there to be such a stringent law upon the head of people. The reason why the law manifested itself in the first place was because of your natures. But the Bible shows you that a young lady could be a Nazarene, shows you she could be a prophetess, shows you she could be a shepherdess, shows you that she could be a judge and lead an army. Okay, have you heard, heard of John, John of the Ark in the modern day who led an army in Europe, who defeated an army? To put in a king in France? Read your history. Those days are coming. Now, young ladies, give honor and respect to whom respect is due. We are to honor one another. And just because you are in a position doesn't mean you dishonor a man. And men, just because you are in an office doesn't mean you look down on a shepherdess. Again, I will tell you, swiftly I'll tell you, 
there are some very bold young ladies in that Middle East who are crying out to the Lord, who are walking in the night with those swords drawn on them, having faith in Christ. So unless you got the courage to live in a land of war, unless you got the courage to stand down a military, do not speak so forwardly with your mouth. The days of war are coming. Pray for one another. Wish them well. Bless them. Pray for them until the Lord breaks down your threshing floor. Verse 12 of chapter 16. How much time do I have? You said 10 minutes? Verse 12. And thou shalt remember that thou was a bondman in Egypt. And thou shalt observe and do these statutes. 13. Thou shalt observe the feast of tabernacles seven days. After that, thou hast gathered in thy corn and thy wine, and thou shalt rejoice in the feast. God was telling him, You're gonna, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless everybody. You're going to remember the maidservant. You're going to remember the Levite. You're going to remember the stranger. You're going to remember the widow. There, there should be none in our generation right now who's lacking bread. You relying on the government to do everything? No. They did not see, this is the tabernacle. Notice how what God established first in the Holy Bible was a tabernacle. The government came afterward. The king of Israel became the kingdom of Israel after God had already established the church. So clergymen, the government should be watching you, learning from you, how you preserve your people. I'm going to move fast forward on you again. Apostle Peter established the church. And what the people did was they brought their goods unto Peter. And Peter acknowledged this law and that no one lacked. We're going to go to verse 11. And thou shalt re rejoice before the Lord thy God, thou and thy son and thy daughter and their main servant and they, the manservant and maidservant and the Levite that is within thy gate and the stranger and the fatherless, and the widow that are among you. What did James tell you true religion was? Did you visit the fatherless in his affliction and the widow? Single woman, even if she made mistakes. Now again, single ladies, if you have children, you are already in a position when you have children, especially in a day of plague and a day of wilderness, the Bible says in the book of Revelation that pray that you are not giving birth in the time of wilderness. He says, pray that you're not giving birth. He's basically saying it'd be hard on you. So young ladies, if you're without, if you are a single woman with children, do not be forward with your mouth. Even if you are offended by men, do not be forward with your mouth. The time is going to come where you will rely on each other. Don't say, I don't need a man. You, this, this is foolish thinking. And because you all have been saying this so much, the monies of the government is being drained because they're paying for you to be single. You, you thought this would be a good idea to make the men work hard to see their children and spend a lot of money, but now the government's losing money. You can keep printing it, you can keep printing it and you're going to keep creating inflation. As my daughter says, inflammation. You're going to keep creating it when you keep printing. So God's way is that he establishes a home where there is a provider, there's a protector, and there's other elements and amenities within the house that everybody does their part. Everybody, the husband, the wives, the children, they all do their part and they make the function work. That's the first government. The first government is the family. It is not the government with officials and legislators and governors and senators and publicans and name some other things. That's just not the, that's not the government. The government, the first government is the father and the mother and the children. God instituted that. You break that down, you're breaking down your government. 
you 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 you're you're smiting your own hand. I mean, how how, how far am I gonna go with that? How 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 much is that gonna work out for me? That's starting to hurt. I need this hand, but no. You don't want to make it work. You want to keep coming against something God established. So every time the family wants to come up, no, we don't need you. I need my left hand. But you don't think you need your left hand. God is the right hand of power. You are at his left hand. If you do things in accordance with the Lord, you will be in God and God in you. It is a collaborate thing. But if you don't think you need the Lord, the Lord will withdraw. Now, everybody who's right-handed, try and live your life with your left hand. Just take a day, take an hour, because I don't, I don't want you coming at me that I told you to do this. Just try it out. This is just, let's have some fun. I don't want any emails saying you caused me to do something. If you would like, as a, as a, as a sign, as a, a, a learning, take your left hand. Start to write with your left hand. Start to get milk out of refrigerator. Start to cook with your left hand. Try and start your car with your left hand. Okay, you might have the button or speak to it. Okay, that's fine. Try and, no, do not drive with only your left hand. Try and live your life with your left hand. Just, just if you want to. I'm not telling you to do it. If you like. See how long you can go without your right hand. Now, if you're left-handed, okay, your left hand is your dominant hand. Try and live your life with your right hand. Now, if you're as pedestrian like, like you, did I say that right? If you're that where you can use both, then this is not going to work for you. Okay, try a, no, we're not going to say that. Just try and do something that you can't normally do without something. Okay, try that. And you will see the importance of a body. The Bible says that we are one body. Some are the members of the hand, some are the members of the head but we all need each other. That's the same thing in your government. You cannot sustain your land if you keep changing the analogies of science. When you get into the mind of the people and they begin to look at life with a fixation that you have provided to them that is more non-offensive, you will begin to diminish your nation. You did not build America based on every little offense. You built those highways and those skyscrapers with some very heroic men. Men that would climb up these scaffolds. Remember the, how we were watching the 1920s and these men had no safety measures. The, the, the ratio of men losing their lives were very high. What was the percentage? It was very high. It was a high amount. You can look it up. The ratio of men losing their lives building. Look at the look at the tracks you built across this nation. That's what you're making your profit on to this day. You took the knowledge from Great Britain, how that they laid highways. This is the way they were able to build their wealth. They laid highways. America's wealth skyrocketed when you built the railroads. And those that helped you build it did not get their portion. But look at what could have happened without those railroads. So you should be thanking that slave man. Same thing with your highways. The day you put it in the plans to build a highway, though some doubt it, you did it. And look at what you've done with your nation. Then came the Wright brothers. All these people were believers. The Wright brothers believed that they could fly. And they did such. Then the preacher believed that he could get on a radio. So all you who have a problem with us being on technology, well, we started it all. The radio waves were found by a preacher. And he talked about the light of the Lord. I had his name. I forgot his name, but he, 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 he found it. So in my closing, we need each other. The Bible is showing you a law. As you go into Israel, you going into this land, remember my law. Keep my Sabbath and keep my house. Right now we are in a wilderness. The people are without bonding. You have separated yourselves. Over the course of these 50 years, you become more separated. Now it is a way of life. 
And the way you can change this is only by the truth, only by humility, only by love. We got to love one another. We got to come back to one another. We got to remember the way that the Lord placed it in his book from the beginning. Man loves your wives as Christ loved the church. Wives submit unto your husbands as unto the Lord. It's both a type of love. Still a type of love. Ooh. I love you too, girl. I'm in my spiritual side though, so God bless you, daughter. Anyhow, love each other. Show kindness. And as you do that, you build stabilitators in your life. When you learn how to act out of love, you overcome things that are so offensive. The normal things that you get so offended by, you know how people say they're, they got thick skin. But why don't you just have a lot of love? You could have a lot of love and not be offended. You could have a lot of love and when things go wrong, people come against you, you're able to stand. You're able not to be offended. Because you, 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 you're on cloud nine. I know it sounds a little deep, but you can get to a place in life where what else could go wrong? I mean, come on. Look, look at what's going on. You want to be uptight about everything? Oh, 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 oh. Just, what are you going to do? I mean, don't be crazy. I mean, look for danger if something's coming at you, but... You, you can't go through life like this. You just, you just can't. The Bible says perfect love casts out all fear. I know there's some bad things going on in, in this earth. But have the mind of Christ. This mind that he placed in you, be of Christ. Be of peace. And if everyone could just do that, just do your part. Be of Christ, be of peace. And if we all do that, we will realize a lot of our squirrel, our quarrels and disagreements are really, it's not even that important. I got to go. My wife wants to kiss me. Uh, I love you all. Be blessed. And we will see you on next Sunday. And we'll pick up again in chapter 17. Be blessed. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Comfort yourselves together and edify one another. Woman was created for the man, not the man for the woman. Nevertheless, neither is the man without the woman, neither the woman without the man. The order of the Lord is that the husband is the head of the woman, and the woman was created to be a helpmeet for the man. Therefore let us submit one another in the fear of God. Dear Lord, I pray that we examine ourselves as men and women and return to the order of the Lord to align ourselves according to the word of God, to walk in our respective roles according to the order of the Lord, that we may reestablish the family, the first government created by God. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Once again, we thank you for joining us as we study through the Holy Word from the beginning to the end. Now, for those of you who would like to contribute to help us promote the Word of God in our five-year vision of expanding our broadcasting, opening up tabernacles, opening a child development center, opening a rehabilitation center, and trade schools, you can give through any of these ways, whether it be by Cash App, PayPal, or online under the Give tab. Once again, any amount given will be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Once again, we thank you for watching another lesson as we study through the Holy Word of God and as we were able to get through Deuteronomy 15 and 16. Um, and today we saw how the Lord uh, reiterated a lot of the laws to the new generation of the children of Israel. 
and we saw the year of release when the seven years were passed, debts would drop. We saw how the Lord um, commanded the children of Israel to keep the month of Abib and keep uh, the Passover. And we also saw how the Lord just, he, he fine tuned some things like in the, uh, the year of release, you were not to have wicked thoughts on, um, if you knew it was coming up, you wouldn't give them, wouldn't help, uh, your brother that being an Israelite, you know, and that also falls on the person that is actually taking that you're also, some, some, some a little too loud. The person who is actually getting the loan that in their heart also thinking, okay, I'm going to take this loan, but in the back of their mind or the back of their thought, they're not going to pay for it because they know that there's that seven years that, yes, you know, they don't, they're going to be debt free and they're going to be forgiven. So it goes both on both ends yes, of, of the agreement. Yes, ma'am. You know, and like, you know, uh, for some of us, you know, you don't probably feel that because of the credit score. You know, this is a, it's something that they got from the Bible. You know, the seven years, you know, you get, you know, your credit, cor credit uh, score changes. But let's thank God because it is in his law. And he brought that for before we even decided to implement it. So thank you, Lord, for that. <laughs> <laughs> no, a lot of people are thankful for that. Yes. And will be when they learn of this. Mm -hmm. Um uh, as the Lord continues, or as the Israelite continue to prepare to enter the promised land, the Lord um, reminds them of the month of Abib, mm -hmm. the Passover, and we see how the Lord just is keeping order in the children of Israel and keeping the way he meant life to be and preparing them to be an example to the other nations and to be a force against the wicked nations, those being the Canaanites and the other nations who served the fallen right, right. Um, and you know as we you know we we saw some of those um, laws that the lord gave you know within the message there's always the inspiration that the preacher might feel and i, I guess what uh, what um in, in the lesson that we had today was the first government being a family yes ma'am you know um i guess i really felt that because i do this is something that i see often that i'm seeing between male and female between man and woman how we are so divided amongst each other um it's we don't see things eye to eye um any longer and it's 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 getting so bad that our families are falling apart um our our you know our communities because of the division amongst each other as man and woman um, but there is an order, you know, and that God has already established. And we've been so caught up into what the doctrines of man have put in the earth that we are basically living our lives according to what we said or what we we declared as as we're building ours, we build our nation. But God has a law and an order that he has between man and female, you know. I guess one of the things where, you know, you have the man, um, if he's not balanced by the word of God, he becomes dominant, um, thinking that she is less than, or again, you have the woman that she may see herself superior to the man and not, you know, building him up and causing him, you know, to be broken down. Um, so I think as we are going uh, or what's happening, you know, we are going to be challenged to either we're going to continue with what the doctrines that has been given to us, or are we going to return back to the Lord? Because we're going to need each other, you know, um, of the things to come, you know, we're going to need, you know, that, that analogy that he did was yes, really an eye opener, how far and divided we are, you know, um, in that, in that gulf. Yes, ma'am. Um, and there's always this constant divisions among male and female, you know, and it's getting and it's getting worse. Yes, ma'am. I mean, I don't know how you would view it as as a as your age realm. No, I totally agree. Um, the, the first government is the family. What you are born into is a family, or you know that's how God made it to be. So when we don't have family to grow with, right. we we grow either with a only a mother or only a father there is there is a lack of balance and to go into the scope of time as time goes on and you are alone 
the struggles are hard. Uh, family is meant, they, when family were together in, let's say, the older days, you farmed, you gathered, the, the family worked as a unity to keep each other strong. And when all the young men and young women of that family grew up and they, you know, married and had other families, the family gets stronger. But we can't go anywhere if we have constant uh, merging together, making an eternal being, a child or something that can grow and then splitting apart. When you look up again and you blink and time is gone, you're alone and things get hard. That's what family is for. I know family, my, I always can come to my parents and we, we always will know that family is the most important thing. And that's how God made it to be, you know? So I agree with you, but as a point in, I would say my youth, mm -hmm. I see family as being the backbone of success. You can be successful without a family, but even if you achieve success and you don't have family, you're still lonely. You, know, you have no one to uh, turn to, no one to um, talk to, you know what I mean? So unity is very important. And the bigger the family gets, the stronger you are. But if it even goes outside the family um, as you know, that analogy between you have the men on this side, you have the women on this side, and it's, 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 they're against each other, you know, That's why where we can't I, have I know that there is an element of the devil, he exists, and his goal is from the beginning of time, you saw he came to bring division, you know, he deceived the woman, but his plan was, it was a, it was divisive and that's what he has and the, the devil is still doing to this very very moment to bring division amongst male and female because if united um our kingdom can be greater and and he knows it i mean uni, unity in anything whether it's family whether it's in work mm -hmm. whether it's um, armies army anything unification but what we're seeing in our day is the division among male and female to to the extreme i mean a house divided yeah. upon itself cannot stand so right. the devil is always going to i totally agree with you he's going to come in and split god makes something he comes to either flip it upside down right. or divide it right right and that's where we go back to the original order of the way god intended it to be male and female or you know in their respective roles um but there is an element and i know people are very careful because it seems like um there is an army of women um that has you know basically you're not really coming against the man in general you're actually coming against the order the way god has ordained it to be so a lot of us are kind of almost being we're rising up against what god has already established um, whether we receive it or whether we don't it's actually hurting us as women um, that we are trying to rise above not above a man but against the order that god has made it to be yes ma and, and and it's 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 hurting hurting us as as individuals you know I, I just the message of self-reflection as a woman you know um privileged you know we may think we're privileged but we need a man um a lot you know it's That's the right. way god ordained it to be you know um and we really got to start recognizing and doing a self-reflection um because you know you know we're we're, we're more of a you know we don't have the strength of a man that you know we kind of you know we want to defend ourselves and we come more aggressively but that's not the way god made it to be yes ma'am you know so i respect you as a as a male I mean, something <laughs> okay I, I i agree with that um what was i gonna say there was a point i was gonna make I don't know. I threw you off, and you were just looking at me like, "Where's she going with this?" No, I was, I was gonna say something. It's right here. Can't find it though. Anyway, I'll probably find it as I start to close. Um, 
we hope that as you continue to study through the word of God, here it goes. As you continue to study through the word of God, um, you will see how the order that God set for the church of Israel, for mankind. And you will see how, how God made things to be, to succeed. The devil makes things, he is a destroyer, but God makes things to succeed. He doesn't make things to fall apart. So when you have a man and a woman put together, making children and growing family, and then those families and families and population grow, that's what God wants, growth. And at the rate that the world is growing right now, because of the divide and all of this, we are on a serious decline. And anytime you see a decline in anything other than iniquity, it is, it's not God. And it never makes anything else better. So we hope that you will continue to watch through the Bible and understand God's plan and his order the statutes and the fairness and his forgiveness because yes yeah, seven years i would love to <laughs> reset my credit score whenever i get you know a good credit score again i'm young so anyway or develop one yes ma'am yes ma'am anyway um if you would like to be saved though um do you want to pray a prayer or would you like me to pray a prayer? I'll pray. okay um please bow your head and pray this with me Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I come before your throne and I ask you to forgive me of my sins, known and unknown, that you wash me, that you created me a clean heart, and that you will put righteousness in me to pursue it, to seek your face, cover me in your blood, and lead the way as I follow Lord Jesus Christ. I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Welcome to the kingdom of heaven, where everything is how God intended it to be. <laughs> and there's growth, happiness, joy, unity, and nations upon nations. And if we live for eternity, then there will be millions of nations. <laughs> but that is a topic for another day, because that takes a lot of thought. Thank you so much. We love you. <laughs>